Ranthorn was running down a street in the city of Amberwood when the doors to the warehouse behind him swung open, and a group of three goblins stepped out into the street. The goblins were members of the Wolf Rats, one of the largest crime syndicates on the island, and Ranthorn had just robbed a rare spell book from them. Stop! Return what you stole and we might let you live. A tempting offer, but I'm going to have to decline. I'm sure you understand. Ranthorn dodged one of the bolts fired at him, but the second one hit him square in the chest. He ducked into a nearby alley and began to climb down into the sewers through a grate he'd loosened earlier in the day. He dropped to the ground and started making his way through the dark hallways with the dusty leather-bound book still gripped tight in his hands. This was it his ticket to bringing his father back to life. Now let's jump to a few weeks later, where the party had just woken up from their first night on the island and were eating breakfast at the Ancrav Claw Tavern. Their meal was interrupted by a pale, lanky half-elf in a dark cloak. I don't mean to intrude, but you all look like the adventuring type, and I need some help with something. Of course, what do you need help with? First, though, what would you be able to pay us? I don't have much coin on me, so I'd only be able to pay about a hundred silver, though I have three spell scrolls that I could give you. Good enough. What's the job, then? My father died a while back, and was buried outside of the city. I need to go pay my respects, but since the forest isn't exactly safe, I need someone to help protect me. The graveyard is only about half a day's travel to the east, so we should be back before sundown. Sounds like a plan. Once we finish eating and getting our gear ready, we'll meet at the East Gate. After Ranthorn left the tavern, the party got to discussing this deal. This deal seems pretty sketchy, not gonna lie. What do you mean? He's just a poor boy trying to go see his father's grave. Look, we're on an island containing basically only criminals or people crazy enough to choose to come here on their own, and I think that being suspicious of others should be the default stance here. Didn't you choose to come here on your own? That's... different. Well, what if he was born here? The island has been around for a long, long time, so we can't just assume that every single person was sent here from the mainland. Fine, point taken. But still, there's something off about him. Just keep an eye out, alright? And with that, the party went to the East Gate and met up with Ranthorn. They immediately started traveling along the trail towards the graveyard, and they were making pretty good time, until they came across a group of three Bogards blocking their path. The leader shouted something at the party, and even though none of the members of their group could understand the language, the message was pretty clear. This was their territory, and they wanted the party to go back wherever they came from. Gang immediately ran up and punched one of the Bogards and initiated a fight. After the fight had been raging for a bit, Edith was severely wounded and one of the Bogards went in for the killing blow. However, before his swing could connect, Ranthorn cast a spell and three darts of blood-red magical energy shot out of his hand. They hit the Bogard and luckily it was enough to kill it, though Ranthorn looked extremely pale after this and sat out for the rest of the fight. Luckily, the fight ended almost immediately after this, because the two injured Bogard guards quickly fled from the scene. Edith stepped over the eviscerated corpse of the Bogard leader and said, Well, I guess we can pass now. The rest of the travel was uneventful, and the party arrived outside the walls of the foggy graveyard. Ranthorn walked up to the gate and tried to open it, only to learn that it was locked. Do any of you happen to have a key? Tenebra stepped up and quickly picked the lock, letting them into the cemetery. Edith recognized the graveyard from her dream the previous night, and immediately left the rest of the group to start searching for the grave of Lance and Elifir. She eventually found it in the back corner of the area, exactly where it had been in the dream. Edith cast Ray's dead, and the zombie dragged itself out of the dirt below her. The corpse of Lance and Elifir was holding a silver dagger in one hand, and a small, dark purple crystal in the other. Edith quickly grabbed both of them, but while all of that was happening, the rest of the party was with Ranthorn near his father's grave. Ranthorn began chanting words in an unknown language and sliced his hand open with a dagger, letting the blood drip onto the gravestone. 
Hey Tenebris, do you think that this counts as something suspicious enough to stop trusting him? Eh, I've seen weirder. Then the party saw a rotten hand reach up from the grave and pull itself above the surface. Ranthorn opened his mouth to say something, but was interrupted when the undead equipped a damaged longsword, and with necrotic energy crackling across the blade, swung at Ranthorn. He was able to stumble out of the way just in time to avoid being sliced in half. The party immediately began to intervene to help him out, but Ranthorn's father was a strong foe. Every time he hit the party, his wounds seemed to partially heal, and the party was having a tough fight, with Jay being in the worst position health-wise. Ranthorn was looking extremely pale at this point, but he tried to help by casting another series of blood-red darts of magical energy. Though partway through the spell, he passed out and the last dart went wild, hitting Gang. However, the spell was not enough to take down the undead, and it swung the necrotic blade down at Jay for the killing blow. It was at this point that Edith showed back up, and proceeded to stab Ranthorn's father through the back of the throat with the magic dagger she'd gotten from the other grave. Well, it's a good thing I excavated that grave, isn't it? You did what? Oh, nothing that you need to worry about. For now. That doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. Anyway, let's get back to Meyerfield before we get horribly eviscerated by whatever it is that's lurking in the woods. Edith was able to use one of her potions to heal Ranthorn and get him back up, and they traveled back to Meyerfield without any problems. When the party arrived back at the Ancrav Claw Tavern, Ranthorn gave them their payment, but also had another offer for them. If you want one more job, I'd be willing to pay if you help guard me on my trip up to Amberwood tomorrow. Amberwood? Where's that? It's a city up north of here, about a day's travel if we go by cart. Second largest city on the island, only a bit smaller than the capital city. We really need to buy a map sometime, but yeah, we'd be willing to help you out on that. We'll meet you by the north gate in the morning. The next morning, the party was briefly distracted while on their way to the north gate. They had met a human shopkeeper named Blinsky, who owned the toy store creatively named Blinsky's Toys. He had opened a new branch of his store in Meyerfield, but it hadn't been very successful, so after only a month he had to close it down and take all of his stuff back up to the main store in Amberwood. After talking to the party for a bit, they ended up adding him to their traveling caravan, and when they met up with Ranthorn, they began their journey up towards Amberwood. Around the middle of the day, the party passed by a medium-sized lake next to the road. In the middle of the lake was a large, ancient statue of a bard in a tri-cornered duelist hat. In one hand, he was holding a rapier, and in the other hand was a small stone cube. The plaque at the bottom was extremely damaged due to age, and the only word that was readable was Savior. Hey, wait a second, I think I recognize that person. I was reading a book a few weeks back about him. He was some fancy evil bard named Harvey, who was apparently executed 700 years ago. Wonder why his statue's here. Well, that book must have been wrong, because this statue can't be more than 500 years old. Maybe they decided to wait a couple hundred years to build a statue for him? What I'm confused about here is what he could possibly be the savior of. From what I've heard about the guy, he's bad news. There's a bunch of cults in Darkwell that worship him, claiming he's the mythical 10th Archdevil that will lead to the devils finally winning the Blood War and conquering the universe. He doesn't look like a devil, he just looks like a guy in a hat. The rest of the journey was fairly uneventful, and eventually the party arrived at the city of Amberwood, a massive city with a towering stone wall surrounding it, and that was constantly guarded by platoons of soldiers. Blinsky left the party to go unpack his supplies and get his store ready, and Ranthorn claimed he had business to attend to, and went his own way, leaving the party alone. As per their usual plans, they immediately found the closest place that served drinks, the Red Water Inn. While the party was drinking, Jay recognized someone else at the inn. It was a half-elf sailor who was briefly a part of his father's crew. Jay went over to talk to him, but was interrupted by the tavern's window shattering. A bolt flew through and hit a dwarf in the throat, and he died instantly with his blood splattering the wall behind him. 